Hello, welcome to another video. Today we are working on part two of our rainbow series. So we are going to be painting an orange mandala. And again, we are going to be painting on a 10 inch square surface. This is a wood piece. It's kind of like a wood canvas that I got from Michael's. I will link these in the description below. And then all the other tools that I'm gonna go through can be found in my Amazon shop. I will also link that in the description of the video. That can also be found by going to my website, which is thoughtfuldots.com. And then just click on the tools I use tab and that will take you to my Amazon shop where you can shop these tools directly. And as you can see, I've already painted my base black using Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin in Pure Black. And then I'm just gonna go through tools really quick. I will be drawing on the guide marks using um, these Brussarth white charcoal pencils. I will be using a 16 point mandala stencil compass to draw on some more guide marks. And as far as paint, actually I'll just finish going through these tools. Nail stylus set. I will leave a link in the description of the video for a size chart for my specific tools so that you can use that to convert to whatever set you're using. I will also be using dotting rods by Happy Dotting Company. And these have the millimeter size right on the handle which makes it easy for you to follow along or you can use this to convert to whatever dotting rod set that you're using. And then I will be using some brushes. These are US art supply brushes, but you can use whatever brushes that you have available to you. And then as far as colors, ooh, I have to sneeze. So I picked a more deep orange. This is cadmium orange. And then a little bit of a lighter one, jack-o'-lantern orange. And then I did grab a yellow just to make a little bit of an orangey yellow tone. And then I did grab this flash orange paint, which is a orange metallic. But that's pretty much it, keeping it very simple. I was thinking of adding maybe some gold, I don't know. I kind of wanted some type of metallic in there, but these just both feel like it will dull it out. I don't know, maybe a little bit of gold. If I do use gold, it'll be glorious gold. Okay, I think that is it as far as tools. Actually, we may or may not, actually we probably will <laughs> be using mirrors. So I bought this empty container from Michaels and just filled it with different size mirrors that I got from Amazon. So I'll probably be using some of these. It's okay if you don't have them, I'll give you some um, alternatives in case that you don't have these. So yeah, we can get started. It's early. I'm still having my coffee. I'm painting earlier than normal today, so my husband will be up soon and getting ready for work. So if you hear background noise, that's what it is. Shouldn't last long. Okay. So we are just going to find the center real quick. I'm just grabbing my ruler, measuring 10 inches, cause that's how wide the board is. And then I'm just marking five, which is half. And 
And I'm just gonna do that going each direction. So that one's looking pretty good right there. So I'm just gonna take my compass and put that pointy edge on that center dot. And then I'm just checking the work. So I'm bringing that pencil all the way out to the edge and then flipping it around and just making sure it's hitting on the same spot, which it is. Then I'm going left and then I'm going right. I can move it a tiny, tiny bit. So now it's hitting at the same edge all the way around. So that is a good center. So I'm gonna go with that one. So I'm just putting the stencil right over the center. Oh, and I do have a Lazy Susan under here just to make it easier to spin. That's also linked in my Amazon shop. So I'm just using the charcoal pencil to draw out the vertical guide marks. And we are just extending these out to the edge. I forgot to mention, and I just happened to do it. I don't know how. I wasn't even thinking about it. But since we're working on a square, we want to make sure that there's a set of guide marks basically going um, north, south, east, west. So right this way and then this way. And then we want the diagonals to be going through the corner. And that will just keep our design nice and um, evenly placed on this square surface. just blowing off any of the residue from the chalk pencil. And then I'm actually just gonna pop this in the electric sharpener real quick. Just to give us a nice point. And I'm also going to put this back over the center and I'm just going to draw out one set of circular guide marks 
I like to draw these myself with the compass because I don't like all the gaps in between. I like it to be a solid circle. And then these are about a centimeter apart, maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna draw a couple more to get it all the way out to the edge there. I'm just doing slightly bigger than one centimeter. And then we're gonna put this in the center and I like to push down, I like to make kind of a hole. And then I'm just putting the pencil right on that first line that we made and extending this circular guide mark out. So if you want more guide marks, then you could go back through and do another set in between each one, which I typically do, but I just did it like this yesterday on the red video I did, and I like it. So I'm going to keep it like this, and we are ready to go. So we are going to mix up the paint, and now that I'm thinking about it, with these orange colors, it might be nice to add some white to really give it that pop. So maybe I can then use the gold and the white. Because if I just use the gold, I'm nervous it'll dull it down. But if I add some white, I think that will brighten it back up. So we can try both of these. And then I'm just going to pour these into my paint palette. So that's the cadmium orange, which is a really nice deep orange. And then the jack-o'-lantern orange, which is a little bit lighter. And then I'm actually going to do the jack-o'-lantern again and add some saffron yellow. Primary yellow is a good one too. And I'm just taking a little mixing brush, grabbing a paper towel. And I'm just making kind of a yellowy orange. And I actually want to do one more of these. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. And then I'm doing another yellow with orange. And then I also want to add some white. I like Deco Art Snow Titanium White just to give us one more lighter shade. And then this will kind of be like an ombre, a nice gradient.
So I'm okay with a little bit of yellow in this palette, but again, we're doing each painting one color of the rainbow. So this one's orange. So I just want to make sure that orange is really the star of the show, but a little bit of yellow will be fine. So now we kind of have this nice gradient. And we can get started. So I'm going to start with the flash orange, so the metallic. And I'm gonna grab the largest rod in my set. It's very dirty. <laughs> uh, okay. And it looks a little liquidy, so I'm just going to grab my mixing brush and just make sure. It's nice and mixed up. Okay, for the center dot, I get a lot of paint. You can see I dip my tool pretty far in there. I don't just do the very tip. And then I also lift it up underneath and there's, I just make sure that there's like paint dripping off. I want a lot of paint, especially for this center dot because it's so large. And you can see there's some ripples in it. So we just need a little bit more paint. So I just kind of hover over the top there. <clears throat> and for this center, I am just going to grab a dotting tool and just kind of spread out the paint. So now we have our center dot. So now we're going to do our rings of dots going around and I'm going to go from light to dark. So I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to start with the large end of the yellow stylus tool. Actually, I guess we could Let's think, maybe I'll start with white. So we just want to do our best to get these all to be the same size. If the paint starts to build up on your tool, then the dots will start to get bigger. So if your dots start to get bigger, then just wipe the tool off. That was a little big. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe my tool off. And as I get towards the end, I'm just kind of eyeballing to see about how many dots I can fit there. I can fit probably two more. So now we have our first row. And now 
we're going to go up in size. My tools are a little dirty, so I'm just chipping the paint off. So I'm gonna go up to the large end of the white stylus tool. And now we're gonna go in between each dot. So I'm using the large end of the white stylus tool, but I am just applying a little bit less pressure to make these a little bit smaller to fit in between each dot. If it's easier, then you might want to just use a smaller tool. but I typically will go for larger tools, use more paint, and then just um, use the pressure to adjust the size to be larger or smaller. More pressure, they'll be larger, less pressure, they'll be smaller. And I just feel like that gives me more control over the sizing. Okay, so there we have our second row. And instead of going up in size, I'm actually just gonna use the same size. And I'm going to the little bit darker color. Got some yellow on my hand. Okay, there's our third row. So now we're going to jack-o'-lantern orange. And I'm gonna go up in size to the large end of the blue tool. And we're just going in between each dot from the row before. All right, and we're gonna do one more ring of dots using the darker orange. And I'm gonna use the same tool. I'll probably just load more paint on it to get them to be a little bit bigger. Yep. And we are going to do the same thing. Just going in between each dot from the row before. I like when we do the light colors going out to the dark. It kind of gives a glowing effect. So now I'm just going to pick a smaller dotting rod. We will just test this one out. I'm using size five and I'm going to use the jack-o'-lantern orange. I might need to go up in size because I'm going to be doing a dot on every vertical guide mark, but I want there to just be a little gap in between for a swoosh. 
So we just need them to be close to one another, but leaving a little gap, if that makes sense. Um, so we just want a gap in between them because we're going to do a swoosh right there. So maybe even a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go to the six and a half dotting rod. And then you also just want to keep an eye on the circular guide marks and pay attention to where your dots are landing in reference to the circular guide mark because that's how we're going to make sure that our patterns are staying in line and staying the same height so I can see that they're all pretty close to the circular guide mark so we just want to make sure we use those circular ones to make sure that our patterns are all the same height. So everything's nice, nicely placed in between this guide mark and this guide mark and everything is nice and lined up exactly how we want it. Okay, let's see here. I was gonna do gold, but I'm just not feeling it. So I think just do white. So I'm going to use the large end of the green stylus tool. And I need to pour more white. I haven't used this one in a minute. So I'm using the large end of the green tool and I'm dotting in between each orange dot and then I'm flipping it over and I'm using the small end to drag down. I'm just wiping my tool off and next we're gonna do some swooshes let's see so this guide mark, we're doing a swoosh pattern going downward. This guide mark is a little bit too short. This one's a little too tall. So I'm gonna start each swoosh right above this guide mark to give us a little bit more length. And then we will be doing a brush stroke around so that will leave a little bit of space for us to end our brush stroke here. So I'm always thinking a few steps ahead when it comes to patterns. We just wanna make sure everything fits nicely. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm actually gonna start with the darkest and then go to the lightest. So let's see here. I'm using the large end of the green stylus tool 
dotting right above that guide mark. Oh, and I'm going to be doing these on every other vertical guide mark. And they're going to be on top of the orange dots. So every other. So just skip one. So using the large end of the green to dot and then flipping it over and using the small end to drag down. So I'm just going to wipe the tool off and I'm gonna keep using this green tool so I'm just going to the next lightest color, so the jack-o'-lantern orange, but I'm just going to pour a little more. And I'm going to be dotting on both sides of the swoosh that we just did, and these are going to be slightly shorter and they just kind of go in that little nook there. And then flipping the tool over dragging these down and we will do that for each swoosh pattern All right, we're going to do the same thing just with the next lightest color. So we're just following the gradient. And we are just going to squeeze one more using the lightest color. And these ones will just have a teeny tiny little tail. But we'll finish off that kind of gradient ombre. So I want to, I really wanted to do some brush strokes. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but I think if we just use a smaller, thinner brush, then it will be good. This is five over zero. So I'm just getting the brush wet. And then I just need to decide what color. Um, I'm gonna try, um, I don't really have a black. I wanted to test this just to see if it's opaque. I think this will be good. So I'm just using a small brush And I'm just doing some thin brush strokes. A 
around each swoosh pattern. So there we have our brush strokes. I am just cleaning off my brush. And I want to do more swooshes. I'm really liking this um, swoosh pattern, especially with the orange gradient. It looks really cool. So I think we'll do that again. but I'm going to start light and go to dark this time. So we will start with the lightest yellow and I'm going to start on this guide mark up here. I'm doing that tapping motion to unload more paint. These ones are a bit longer, so you We'll need more paint because we have to drag it a longer distance. And we're just going in between each petal pattern and staying on that vertical guide mark that goes right through the center of each petal. <clears throat> I've never done this pattern before, so we're just kind of going with the flow, hoping it looks good. And we are just gonna do the same thing, going in the gradient. Oh, I clean that up so it doesn't make a mess later. So you really need a lot of paint on the tool. and then tapping to unload more paint. And that will give us some nice big swooshes. And I just like to do these little dragging motions to grab more paint. And that'll help us make bigger swooshes. going to the jack-o'-lantern orange now. Thank you. 
right, we are going to our final color, which is the darkest one. And I'm gonna pour just a little bit more. So cool. It's kind of looking like a star. So we are gonna do some more brush strokes. I'm gonna use that same brush, five over zero. And just trying to think about what color. Let's go for, it's hard. I wanna either do this one or the dark one or the jack-o-lantern. Let's do jack-o-lantern. So I'm gonna get more pink because I want these to be a little bit thicker. Just pushing down because we want these thicker at the base and then coming up to be thinner. And we're just giving it that kind of flower petal shape. was a good color choice that so looks nice I'm just rinsing the brush off and let's see I want to I want to do top dots there, but I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer. So I'm going to now add the mirror shapes. So I'm just going to grab one diamond shape mirror and our charcoal pencil. So we're going to outline our mirror shape where we want the mirror. And then once we finish our painting and varnish, then we'll go back and add the mirrors. So we just want all of them to start at the same guide mark. So I'm gonna start them all on this guide mark here. So I always place them slightly higher, not slightly, this one's a lot higher than the tip of the flower petal because we're going to be doing brush strokes so yeah and you want we're going to start our brush strokes up here and go down so you want some space here for our brush stroke to come down if we have it down here there won't be anywhere for the brush stroke to come down and end so i want it higher up so i am just going to outline
and we're just doing that on that vertical guide mark that's going in between each petal pattern. Okay, so there we have our outlines. Now I'm going to take the white and the large end of the blue stylus tool, and we're going to dot at the tip of the diamond and then just walk the dots all the way along the diamond shape. So basically just outlining where that mirror is going to go. And we're going to do that on each diamond shape. Okay, now we are going to do some brush strokes. I'm gonna go up a little bit in size. I'll use this two over zero brush. And for these ones, I'm going to start dark and go light. So I'm going to start with the darkest orange and there's this guide mark here. I'm going to start the brush strokes right below that guide mark. And we're just going to do that all the way around. I'm actually going to move up to the rigger brush, which is the longer bristle. Just getting that wet. I'm going to pour a little bit more jack o' lantern orange. So now we're going to that one. And I'm going to make these slightly shorter. And we will just do that all the way around. If your brush strokes are looking a little see-through, especially with the jack-o'-lantern orange, just use more paint and that should help. We're now going to the next lightest. And 
these are slightly shorter again. Okay, and now we're going to do our final brush stroke using the lightest yellow. And I just have a feeling I'm going to need more, so I'm going to just do that now. I am also real quickly going to top dot on those large, <clears throat> excuse me, orange dots. So I'm just taking a tool that's smaller than them. So four and a half. And I'm going to use the yellow color, the whitish yellow color. And I'm just going to top dot on those. Okay, I'm gonna grab my long brush again. <coughs> and we are going to do our final brush stroke. And again, these will be slightly shorter. I'm actually going to make this one a little longer. So I'm going to have them all start on this guide mark so that they're all the same length. And we are just filling in that gap nicely. So now I'm going to do some swooshes using white and these petals all end on this guide mark. So I'm going to start our swoosh right below that guide mark. So just dotting with the large end of the green tool and then flipping it over and using the small end to drag down.
Okay, so now I'm going to kind of fill in the corners. So I'm going to grab a larger dotting tool. I need to mix up more paint. So I'm going to grab the size 9 dotting rod and I'm going to dot right at the tip of that pattern on this vertical guide mark and I'm just going to do that for all the corners. And I'm going to grab the yellow tool and the white. So the large end of the yellow tool. And I'm just going to walk the dots. Now I'm going to go, let's see, we'll do this second lightest color and the large end of the white stylus tool. And we'll just walk the dots again. And I'm going to use the large end. I need more paint. So I'm going to do an extra large dot at the tip using the large end of the green tool. Okay. 
and then the large end of the blue stylus tool. And we will just walk the dots down. All right, I'm gonna do some brush strokes. I'm just gonna take a medium brush. This is the two over zero. And I'm gonna do the darkest cadmium orange. Just do a brush stroke. Then I'm going to take the white and the large end of the blue tool. And I'm just going to, going to walk some dots down just along the tip of each petal that we just made. And we are gonna do another brush stroke. And I'm gonna use jack-o'-lantern orange. And I actually need to get a longer brush. I'm gonna use that rigger brush, the number one long bristle. And I just wanna make sure there's a con enough contrast between these two. Yeah, I think it's fine. And we are just kind of building out the corners here. Um, I'm now gonna go to the lighter. And I'm gonna bring these up almost like just up into that corner there to kind of fill in that corner. Filling it out. So I'm extending these up longer than the tip of the petal. Rinsing that off and just kind of 
thinking in my head. What can we fit here? We could even do another brush stroke going the opposite direction to fill in that space, which is what I think I'll do using the lightest. So thick, and then just lighten up on the pressure towards the tip there. Just kind of filling in that gap. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good and filled in. I am now going to take the jack-o'-lantern orange and a larger tool. This size eight, and I'm going to dot along the center of these two guide marks here. Oops, wrong color. Just making a ring going all the way around. I'm just going to squeeze one more, a little bit smaller just to fit, and I'm just going over these ones. Oh, wrong color. I'm going to take the large end of the blue stylus tool and the lightest color, and I'm going to Start at this swoosh here and walk the dots out to the tip of that dark orange swoosh. And I'm just going to do that for each white swoosh. So it's kind of curving a little bit. So they're all kind of curved and it gives it kind of a cool look. 
And then I'm just thinking if I want to add something here. I don't know what. Um, could possibly do just one more brush stroke. So I'm just using five over zero. I'm just gonna squeeze one in there. Maybe white, just to add some more white and really make it pop. I'm just rinsing that brush off and then I'm going to take the large end of the white tool and the white paint and I'm going to dot in between each orange dot that we made. So I know we didn't use much of the flash metallic paint, but we will be using it for some top dots. Um, there's still this gap right here that I want to fill in more. So I'm going to take the size five dotting rod and I'm gonna take the darker color And I'm just going to dot right in this little gap here. Oh, I keep dipping in the wrong color. And now I'm gonna go, let's see, I just need a small tool. Size three dotting rod and the second lightest. going to do one more. You can use the large end of the blue. I'm just going to do one more.
And now I'm gonna use the pink tool. So let's see, let's do the, let's do the small end. And I'm just going to do some little micro dots in between those dots that we just made. We might even be able to do a little white dot on the tip. So we'll do little micro dots and then use the larger end to just add one little dot on the tip to finish that out. And that just kind of helped fill in those little black spaces there. I think that looks pretty cool. looks really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. Okay, I'm going to take the large end of the white tool and I just want to do some little top dots. Just being careful not to touch the wet paint on the outer edge. Okay, so I don't think this needs any um, top brush strokes. This looks really cool. I'm happy with this. So we're just gonna let this dry and then once it's dry, I'm going to go back in with the flash metallics and just add some top dots and maybe some top brush strokes with this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let this dry for a minute and then come back and we will add those. Okay. So this has had a little bit of time to dry. So I'm just going to add some top dots, but I don't think I'm going to be doing any top brush strokes today. I like the way that it looks. So I'm just going to add in some of this flash. So I'm just using size six dotting rod. You just want a dotting rod that's smaller than that large dot. And then I'm gonna flip it over and use the five and a half. And I'm just gonna go right through the center of all of these orange dots, so we're just top dotting them with a little bit of metallic. And such a small detail, but I want to I just want to walk these dots out. Just along the outer edge. They just kind of stop abruptly. So I'm just walking them along the edge of the board. And that kind of like circles it out too. This one doesn't quite come to the edge. That's okay. It just curves a little bit. That's much better.
Perfect. Okay. That changed a bunch. Love that. Okay. So that is everything I want to add, I think. So I'm just going to let this dry for a couple hours. I'm going to go run some errands and then I don't know if I want to add more, but I might at that point. I'm just going to give it some time and then see how I feel when we come back. Okay, so I do want to add a couple top brush strokes. If I wasn't doing the rainbow set, I would just leave this. I really love the yellow in there, but since this is the orange piece of our rainbow set, I want to make sure the orange is just the main color that really stands out. So I'm going to top brush stroke on the, just that yellow brush stroke and I'm going to use the flash orange, so orange metallic. And not covering the whole yellow brush stroke, we're just going right through the center. This orange is a little stringy. Okay, perfect. And now we have that little bit of metallic. And one last thing, because I can never just stop. I'm gonna take the large end of the green stylus tool and I'm just going to finish out with a dot in each corner. And then for real, I think I'm done. Or actually, maybe not. I lied. Oh my goodness. I'll just keep adding and adding and adding. I just got orange all under my nail. I'm wearing white shorts right now, so I need to be really careful. I'm just going to take this light yellow. And I just want to do one last top dot and I think that will really just make that pop okay for real for real I'm done now I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna let it dry and then we will come back and erase the guide marks Okay, this is now dry, so I'm taking a Pampers Wet Wipe. And we are just gently going to start removing the guide marks. I like to do these little circular motions. And I don't push down very hard. That Bressarth charcoal pencil comes off pretty easy, so I try to just do this part lightly just to be gentle with the paint. Okay, now that we have all the guide marks off, I am going to take this outside and spray it with varnish. I will be using Krylon Crystal Clear Spray for all of these rainbow pieces. And I like to do one coat and I just wait about five minutes for it to dry. It dries quickly. 
And then I just do one more, so two coats. And I like to do this outside. It's really easy and quick process. So I'm gonna go do that. And then we will come back and place our mirrors and then we will be done. Okay, we are just going to pop on the mirrors. This has been varnished. And then we're done. So I have my diamond mirrors, super glue, gel, my Gorilla Glue. I like the gel because it stays put. Just gonna do three at a time. It doesn't get all runny like some other glues. I absolutely love how this turned out. It's fun painting squares for a change. I might have to do some bigger ones of these. I really enjoy how they look. glue on that one for my finger, but once it dries, we can scrape it off. And I'll just give these a few minutes to set and then I will use a wet cloth to clean them off, but we are done. So in the next clip, I will show you, I'm just scraping that little glue off of my nail. Um, in the next clip, I will show you what the final result looks like, hopefully outside, it's nice and sunny. But yeah, those are all good. Okay, I will show you the final result. All right, here is our final painting. I hope you guys enjoyed part two of our seven part rainbow series. Stay tuned for yellow next. And if you could just like this video, share it, and subscribe, that would be great. We will see you guys next time.